Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to do a video going over the difference between the CR Touch and the BL Touch and what I would recommend if I'm buying new and if I would consider it an upgrade or not. Um, I've had a lot of people in the community uh, reach out asking if they should switch from the BL Touch to the CR Touch after I did the first video about a month ago and I figured it makes sense to do a video kind of covering that. So I'm going to go over some of the differences, kind of go over some of the uh, accuracy details kind of show you how to get those uh, with your printer and then uh, give my recommendation towards the end if you have any questions about the process go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on discord and if you haven't already make sure you hit that like button and subscribe all right so the first thing i wanted to point out was i've been running the bl touch for a long time uh, so we know that it does stand up over time and it's been around for a while uh, i've only had my cr touch here for uh, about a couple months uh, so everything is going to be based on that time frame i can't speak to the longevity of it i assume it's going to last long because it is made well um, but again i've only had it for a couple months so i'll take that as you will all right so let's go ahead and get started all right so the first thing i wanted to talk about here was packaging um they both come in a decent looking box. I do think I like the box for the CR Touch a little bit better. It's a little bit cleaner and smaller. Uh, but the one for the BL Touch does do its job. It's well insulated, well packaged. Uh, so I'd say overall no issues there. It's just a little bit more bulky. Uh, so if you're the type of person who cares about the unboxing and that kind of stuff, or if you're giving it to as a gift and you think that that person will, um, just slight favor towards the packaging for the CR Touch for me. I just like how it looks better. Uh, but again, that doesn't really impact functionality at all. All right, next let's talk about the sensor itself. Uh, the both plastic base, uh, the BL Touch has a uh, plastic probe as well. And this probe has been known to bend. You can see that this one does kind of have a slight bend in it. Um, where the CR Touch has a metal probe. Um, and that, obviously it's metal, so it's not going to bend when it's being operated. I would say overall, just looking at them, the actual looks of the CR Touch I prefer better. It's just a little bit cleaner. And uh, the other thing that stands out to me as a pretty big difference is how the cables connect. The CR Touch has a plug at the top. It just plugs in nice and clean. Where the BL Touch has the actual board exposed and you have to actually connect the cable here. Uh, again, it's functional. It does work. I just like the CR Touch better. Uh, one thing that is worth mentioning about the probe is this aluminum probe uh, supposedly cannot be replaced um, based on everything I've read that appears to be true where uh, if you do have issues with the plastic probe you can swap that out and you can remagnetize this as well uh, so keep that in mind um, but again this does feel like a little bit more solid product uh, which goes into the next thing the weight um, based on my scale, uh, the BL Touch came in at about 8 grams, uh, the CR Touch was 11, so it was about a 3 gram difference. Um, my scale is not the most accurate, it's just a little food scale, uh, but it just it's for a point of reference. So the CR Touch is a little bit heavier, um, but not by enough to make a difference, we're talking 3 grams. And then let's go into size. If you're actually looking at the length of it, uh, the CR Touch is shorter when you go from plastic to plastic. Uh, but if you go from plastic to end of the nozzle, uh, the BL Touch is shorter. So if you are swapping between the two, you're definitely gonna have to adjust your Z offsets, which going between these two, that should be done anyways, even if you go in between BL Touches because there could be some variances there anyway. But that said, uh, because of the way that these are mounted, as far as the cabling and the sizes, if you have uh, a, a custom fan duct covers and stuff that are meant for the BL Touch, they may or may not work for the CR Touch. You gotta take a look at each one individually. Uh, some of the ones I've had in the past would work. Um, the one that I have on there now would work. And then ones like this would also work uh, just because it's mounted off to the side and you're adjusting it anyways. But if you have any of them that are designed to run the cables and everything like that, kind of hide it a little bit more, uh, that's where you're gonna have issues. All right, so now we'll talk about support. So technically the BL Touch wins here because it's supported across uh, any board that has a BL Touch ports and some of the older ones can go back to the 8-bit boards if you're using that transfer board as well. Uh, where the Creality CR Touch is technically only supported for uh, the Creality 422 and 427 boards. Uh, I did have this working on my SKR Mini V2. Um, I did a video on both of the install processes, which I'll link to below. Uh, so it does work either way. It's just not actually supported there. And then switching over to the wiring a little bit, if you're getting the official uh, BL Touch, um, 
then the wiring is pretty much the same as it is for the CR Touch, uh, pretty clean. Uh, it's going to be a five pin to five pin, similar to uh, this cable here. Um, the wires are actually interchangeable, so if you were swapping between the BL Touch and CR Touch, you can just plug it into the other one. You won't have any issues there. Um, if you go into some of the off-brand BL touches, uh, you're going to have some miscellaneous issues with wiring. Like here's an example of one I got when I bought one off of Wish. Um, the wiring was the 5 pin to a 3 and a 2 pin, which works just fine. Uh, the only issue is, if you look at where I sliced these wires, that was the length of the cable they provide. I think it was about six inches, so obviously that wasn't going to work. I had to use a cabling that I already had at home to extend it. Uh, so pay attention to uh, what wiring uh, the thing is going to ship with when you're ordering it. If you have to add additional wires or extensions or whatever, and you're able to save decent money doing so, uh, that's great. Uh, but if it's about the same price and you have to do it anyways, then just go ahead and get the official or get one with the wiring that works, which goes straight into the price aspect. Um, I think right now, uh, I looked on Amazon this morning, uh, the official BL Touch was going between uh, 45 and $50, where the CR Touch was on sale for somewhere around 35 to $40. I don't want to quote exact numbers because Amazon doesn't like that, um, but it's in those ranges, and if you catch them on sale, obviously it can be better. So there are times where you can actually get the CR Touch for cheaper. Um, I think most of the time they're right around the same price. One might have a sale versus the other, but it's typically within a couple dollars of each other, so they're about in the same ballpark unless you're going with one of the off-brand ones. Uh, the off-brand ones you can get for typically like 20 to 25 bucks. So if that's what you're looking for, then that might be a better option for you. Uh, the firmware is pretty much the same across the board. Um, both of them uh, pretty much provide you instructions to go download the firmware from Creality if you're going to be using the pre-compiled firmware or um, Big Tree Tech if you're going to be using the SKR Mini. Either one of them actually ship with the firmware that you need. So I I can see why, that's not a big deal, um, but basically doing it that way, A, you're saving a little bit on materials, and B, you're basically forcing everybody to get the latest version of the firmware when they go to install it, which is fine. Um, at the end of the day, it's not much extra work to put the firmware on the SD card. Again, I cover all of that in the install videos that I did for these, and those are linked in the video description below. Then lastly, I want to touch on accuracy. Both of these advertise themselves as being uh, accurate to 0.04 millimeters. Uh, in testing, I've actually gotten much better, which I'll show you how to run that test really quick. You have to enable the Zeeman Pro repeatability test in the firmware. So if you're using Marlin, there's just a couple lines. I'll show you that really quick. Um, if you're using the Quika file firmware, you won't actually be able to run this test. Um, but with that enabled, you'd kick off the command. So uh, just a G code command uh, telling it to run the repeatability test. It'll go through probing 10 times and then it'll give you the deviation. Um, I just ran it a little bit ago on this guy. The first time I got 0 0.002, uh, then I did it two more times and I got 0 0.0015 on both of those. Uh, so if you average that out across the board, I mean, you're still well under with what they're advertising. And I was getting about the same results with the CR Touch as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump over to the printer really quick. I'll show you how to run that. All right, guys, really quick, I wanted to show you what you'd have to enable if you wanted to run that repeatability test. Uh, in the firmware, you would have this sign here, Z Min Probe Repeatability Test. Uh, typically, by default, it is commented out. Uh, so it would have the two... Oops the two slashes like that. Uh, to enable it, you're just gonna delete those and go ahead and kick off a new build. Then you'll push this firmware to your printer. Uh, that's just the, that's really the only change you have to make to the firmware to enable it. All right, so again, you have to enable this in the firmware first, and then you have to be able to send a G code command to the printer, which would be the M48 V4 command. Um, I'm gonna use my TFT35 just because it's simple. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, you can use uh, Octopi and send it, or you can connect the printer to your computer and use Prompterface to send the command as well, which I have a video covering that I'll link to as well. Um, but first you have to auto home it, so go in and do your auto home. All right, and then once that's done, we'll go back and go into terminal, and then we'll send that command. So it'll be M48, 
space um, V4 and then send. Now it's going to go through the repeatability test. It's going to do it 10 times. Uh, I recommend that you kick this off probably four or five times and take the average results of that test. Um, but I'll speed up the video really quick and show you what the output's going to look like here. All right, so I wanted to zoom in a little bit so you can actually see this. Uh, but at the end, you're going to see standard deviation of uh, 0.001953. Uh, that's what the deviation is uh, for that run. Then if you run that about four or five times, take the average, that'll give you a much better insight into uh, what the printer is actually doing and what the average actually is. Now with the BL Touch, they said you can get much better by remagnetizing it. Um, which I think this is fine, but I've seen some where it's like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, or it's really bad. Uh, not on my printer, but example videos. Uh, in those cases, uh, it's definitely worth trying to see what you can do to get better results. All right, so that covers my uh, overview of the BL Touch versus the CR Touch. Uh, just a quick recap, if you're buying new and you can get the CR Touch for a decent price, I would recommend the CR Touch over the BL Touch just because it does appear to be better quality, the components are better, and the probe itself uh, is a lot better quality than just the plastic. Uh, accuracy is pretty much about the same too, uh, give or take, but if you have any issues with the BL Touch, you could potentially remagnetize it to get a little bit better accuracy as well. If you're looking to get the cheapest possible option, uh, one of the off-brand uh, BL Touch is probably a decent option for you just keep in mind that the wiring and stuff could be a little bit different uh, so it might be a little bit more work to get working and then lastly uh, one of the questions that's come up uh, many times so far is if you already have the BL touch would you recommend swapping it out with the CR touch uh, I would say no uh, if you already have the BL touch and it's working I wouldn't really consider it much of an upgrade to go to the CR touch uh, they both work uh, they both do a great job but if one's already working why change it now, like I said, if you're buying new, I would be looking at the CR Touch first. Uh, but if you already have one, uh, I would say just use what you have. All right, so if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.